Hey fam, gonna s share a little bit of wisdom about working out. Doesn't matter age. So I can tag this for fit over 40, fit, fit over 50, fit over 80. Uh, the general rules are the same. And I think a lot of the problem with people trying to get into fitness is the overwhelming just waves of what they'll call information, factoids, that get thrown out. Uh, and it, it gives the impression that if you don't understand all of the nuances, you're not going to get it right. And so you're just going to give up. It's what everybody would do. Um, unless you're going to make this a full-time science, it's not going to work. That absolutely is not the way it needs to be. Uh, am I an expert on this? Uh, I can share what's worked for me. It certainly worked well enough for me. Uh, I came out of high school, uh, I don't know, a 90 pound weakling, um, kind of on the sickly side. I decided I didn't want to stick with that, so I made changes. That was, I got went into the gym first time when I was 18 years old, so roughly that's 30 some years ago. I have made 30 years of mistakes, but I've also made 30 years of progress. So, uh, what I'm going to share with you are a lot of lessons I learned the hard way. And it's not just for me working out. I, I, I was a, a competitive athlete in college, rode on the crew team. On top of that, I was a personal trainer, certified personal trainer for several years, um, and was even a general manager of a powerhouse gym in Florida. Here are some actual realities around working out. and You need to make these decisions if you want to get the results. Working out, the act of working out is not fun. Uh, so I know a, a lot of information, a lot of things are put out there that, that show how they're going to make it fun, and then it's not fun, and so you stop. Get your head right. It's not fun. It hurts if your goal is to cause your body to change. Your body is not going to adapt unless it has something to adapt to. That means you have exceeded some sort of capacity that you have for endurance of, a, of an activity or lifting a weight. That's when your body changes. If you go do an activity and it's real hard and you sweat it, and, and you burn some calories, that's great. Your body doesn't care. Um, if it was able to reasonably handle whatever you put it through, you're already capable of handling it. Your body's not gonna change. You probably burn some calories, good for you on that. Uh, but if you're not eating right and taking care of those things, you're not gonna get anything from it. So understand, for the time that you are doing the work, it will be unpleasant. What you need to do is wrap your head around embracing the unpleasantness and understand that that is getting you the goal that you want. It's like washing your car. I'm sure there's somebody who likes washing their car. More likely, you like having a clean car. So you wash it to enjoy your clean car. This is the same thing. The act of working out is painful and unpleasant and you need to embrace it for what it is. Do it and then you'll see the results for it. But that way, you're not coming into it expecting one sort of psychological reaction to the activity and getting something completely different. It's not gonna happen. If you are not going to do the work and rest and eat correctly, just don't start. Just don't. Uh, the best analogy I can give to this is building a house. Building a brick house, you need the bricks, you need the workers, and you need the time to actually perform the construction. So, let's say you got all the workers. So in this, in this event, the workers are the actual work that you did in the gym, right? So that's what causes people to, to show up. People, I mean, the, the various functions of your body to build the muscle. If you have no workers, if you have all the bricks, We'll call that protein, everything that, that's required to, to do the reconstruction that you're trying to make happen. 
if you have all the bricks and all the time in the world, so you're eating all the right stuff and you're resting, but you don't do the work, great. You got a pile of bricks. Doesn't matter. Um, if you eat a lot of really healthy calories, you know what you've done? Eating a lot of calories. Um, it's, it's better for you nutritionally than eating junk, but calories are calories. So you can't just do that. If you have, if you do the work, if you do the hard work and you're eating all the right stuff and you're not getting any rest, great. You have a whole set of workers here and you have a bunch of bricks and you're like, you got five minutes, go. One brick's going to get moved about an inch and then you're going to call time and they have to go. Great. So you just spent all that time working and you spent all the time and effort to get your nutrition right and then you didn't give your body any time whatsoever to react to that. Uh, and then the last one is, is the bricks. So you do the work and you're resting, but you're either not eating enough, you're not eating right. Uh, if you have a pile of straw there, the workers are not going to build a house with straw. It's just not going to happen. Or if they don't have enough bricks, well then, you got a lot of workers sitting around. Uh, you, you have plenty of time. They have nothing to work with. So nothing changes. If you are not doing all three, just don't. You are wasting your time. If you don't do all of the things, you don't get all of the stuff. You have to do all three of them. Uh, that's really not that hard when you think about it because the actual workout, which I'll get to, is the easiest part of this equation. It is just 45 minutes out of your life, three to four times a week, five times, however long you want. Uh, but that's also another thing. Uh, the, a, big, a big problem that a lot of people have is they hit it too hard. You can overtrain. You, as I said, the body changes when it has to. Uh, I know a lot of folks who, who will say they've gone and, and they do this workout and they're not seeing any results. And, you know, I do three sets of 10 every time and I'm not seeing any growth. Well, right, because you can do the three sets of 10. Why would your body grow? You know, it's not like a balloon. It's not like if you keep putting the same air in it, it's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Uh, you, it's applying pressure. So once you get to a certain point, that's all you're going to get. Until you're increasing the intensity, until you were working out to the point where you've actually exceeded what you really should be doing, your body is not going to change. Uh, so understand that for changing your body, in, intensity in, in what you're doing is, is absolutely the most critical thing that you have to work with. It's also the most important thing to be conscious of because when you're exceeding your, your limits, that's when you get hurt. So you have to be very aware of what you are doing. Understand that these websites, they need new content. They have to put something else out every day so that you're, so that they're getting the traffic, so that you're looking at them. So you've got these folks doing these weird, complicated, touch your nose, reach behind your back, run over here, check your neighbor's mail, come back, and then do that set again. Somebody just made that up so that they could have another session to post. And you look at it, right? You're like this, you have this amazing fit person doing this activity. Right, cause effect. Just because a super fit person is doing this activity doesn't mean this activity got that person super fit. They probably learned how to do that activity five minutes before the camera came on and said, okay, we gotta screen, we gotta, we gotta run this one for the day. If you're doing mobility type of work and things like that, and you just want to mix it up and have something interesting, great. Follow the video. Do it. That's absolutely fine. That's for mobility. That's for burning some calories. That's all fine. We're talking about lifting to change your shape, if that's what you want to do. Uh, yeah, this is, this is not a diet plan. Uh, this is just about if you want to see some growth, if you want to see some dynamic changes in your body, these are the basic rules to follow. Um, although I haven't given you the rules yet. This is just getting your head right in shaking off all of the all of the messages that keep going out about what you have to do and what you have to be in order to get some development. And you just don't. The basic movements are all you need. And what I'm not going to tell you is what the basic movements are. Why? Because there are a thousand apps and a thousand websites that will show you how to do a bicep curl. Great. 
There are two different workout options you should pick from. Either a workout that has compound movements or that are focused by body parts. Compound movements is the word compound means multiple. So there are exercises that involve multiple muscle groups. Things like the squat, uh, that's the entire lower body. Whereas if you go to a gym, you can go to one, one machine where you're doing kickups and that's hitting your quads. And then you do another one where you're pulling your leg back and that's your hamstrings. And you're doing a kickback and that's hitting your glutes. Those are all very isolating, nothing wrong with that. Those are all very isolating exercises. Or you do a squat, they're really hard. Why are they hard? Because you're hitting multiple major muscle groups all at once. It doesn't matter. You really should mix it up anyway. Uh, so when you're starting this, you should pick one. I'm, go I'm going to do compound movement uh, exercises for a while. Or I'm going to do muscle groups. And then you'll get into how you're going to break that down. Push versus pull. If you are new to this, don't, don't research one exercise at a time. Sign up for an app or, or one of these websites. I follow Athlean X a lot. So the good and bad of Athlean X is uh, his routine. So when you watch his videos, they're very nuanced. He's, he very much follows or uh, he trains professional athletes. So he will do a lot of, uh, of these nuanced type exercises that I'm actually kind of telling you you don't have to do. Because what he does is help people recover from injuries or to make fine-tuning in what they're doing so that they can get to the next level. But if you, if you look at his programs, uh, those, are, those are basic exercises. And um, I signed up for one of them. And I think it was a mass building exercise, I think it was called. Very simple, uh, very simple exercises. You have to be you know, conscious of the equipment that you have to work with. But just it, it's not worth... If you're not comfortable with this, it's not worth your time trying to research the nuance of every type of exercise that can happen. Get one of these, get one of these online things, get some basic exercises down and get comfortable with that. Uh, you will need equipment. In my opinion, you will need equipment, which is why I am videoing this here. I have, I'm, I'm out of here by myself, so th that's another thing to understand. I work full time all day. If you've seen any of the other videos, I am quite busy with the property, with the garden, with hobbies that I'm trying to do. I, I don't live my life around fitness. Um, I'm out here alone. I have to move things. Being strong enough to move earth to move bricks, to move blocks, to do whatever I need to do to push a trailer uphill. I want the strength for that. It's nice when you have the vanity points that come with that, but vanity only does not help me out out here. I need to be able to function. So it's, it's very important to me. So I take the time to work out. I live for 45 minutes. That is it. I need to do better on my cardio, but this is not about me. This is about you. Uh, so I think that if you were going to approach this with any sort of long-term serious intent, you're going to need a little bit of information. You're going to need a little bit of equipment. This building that I'm in, it's just, it's a little, one of these little shacks that you can buy um, roadside and then they will drive it over and drop it in your backyard. Uh, that's all this was. I had electric run out to it. So I do have an air conditioner and um, a heater. And I, I've dressed it up a bit, got my little lights along the wall. I tested them out to see if I like them, and I do, so now I need to actually attach them properly versus it being strung down. But that's not the equipment I'm talking about. I am talking about equipment like this. And the reason this is important, and the reason I mention I'm out here alone, I, if I am doing squats or if I'm doing bench presses, this rack has safety bars that you need to use when doing exercises so that if that bar, if you are doing a bench press and that bar slips, it does not come down and crack your skull. Um, or if you really want to work out, which you should be doing, we'll talk about intensity, if you are going to that, to that very failure point, you're going to at some point lose control of an exercise and it's just going to be there on your chest. That's fine. If it's sitting on the bar, crawl out from under it 
give yourself kudos for going to failure, get the bar back where it needs to do and keep, keep working on it. Uh, but anything that could pin me down, I have a bar that's there that will keep it from coming down on my neck, on my, on my face, wherever. Uh, we don't do that. If I am uh, out on the floor without a brace, dumbbells are fine. If you start losing control of a dumbbell, you just drop them. Now, if you're at home, like I said, this is an outbuilding. It doesn't matter, but th this is a small room, and I have a full rack in here. Uh, I will, and, I, and I'll, I'll link a lot of the equipment that I have. What you, what you shouldn't have is a lot of very specialized equipment. And I think most people see those ridiculous Thighmaster-esque kind of one-off machines that works one muscle in a certain way. Don't, don't do that. Uh, you need very kind of basic equipment. In my opinion, if you have a rack with a barbell and you have a decent set of weights that go with it, uh, you're going to need dumbbells, so for a lot of people, the adjustable ones do just fine. I have freestanding free weights, but that's only because I happened to get them online for really inexpensive years ago. Uh, but the interlocking bricks, they're expensive. You're going to have to invest in, in some of this stuff. you Because you have to be able to incrementally increase your weights or to change them based on whatever's going on. And I will tell you, one of the absolute best things that has ever worked for me is is bands i use bands because if you can get your head around the intensity bands are amazing because if you are to the point of failure true failure you can adjust your body a little bit to to finish the rest of a, a rep you know just pushing lead you can't do that you can't modify its weight in the middle in the middle of a rep this is how a reasonable person with some investment on space and equipment and who's willing to put the work into organizing the repetitive nature of what needs to happen will get the outcome that they want because it becomes a machine. It becomes second nature. It becomes autopilot. You just have to get through it. Uh, most of the work comes around getting it set up. So the first thing that... Um, I'm definitely would tell you is to set up your your routine before you start because if you just walk into an empty room and wonder what you're going to do today what you're going to do is stand there for two hours and, and think about some stuff maybe do a couple of exercises and then leave having wasted a lot of time and you're completely frustrated how do I know that trust me I know it and what you also need to not do is do not compare yourself to others especially when you're looking at the at the fitness industry, you don't know what they've done. If they're in the fitness industry, if they're natural, which probably is a rare occurrence, uh, and you're not going to know that, right? They're going to you're going to get a, a, a an article, a fun little thing that says, "Here's so and so's workout." Well, that's great. If that work, I've looked at more than one of those workouts where I'm like, oh, this, this person is amazing. I'm going to look at their workout. And I know immediately that if you are not on, on steroids, if you are not on some something artificial, the normal person's body cannot actually do that work and recover in a reasonable time. You are actually going to overtrain and you are actually going to hurt yourself. They don't tell you that. That person is not going to go... I'm doing a cycle of X and Y and Z, and, and then I'm lifting and doing this workout. Well, yeah, you're going to get their results if you're doing exactly what they're doing, and they're not going to tell you exactly what they are doing. Um, so you just have to understand some basics that really, it, in that 45-minute line, there's there's lots of studies you can look it up that, that show um, the duration of effort, at some point it actually starts to, to become um, detrimental. So you get great benefits from like up to about 45 minutes, from 45 minutes to an hour. You're getting some, but definitely diminishing returns. Over an hour, you're not helping yourself at all. You do not need to destroy your body to get it to respond. You simply have to trigger it. You simply have to have your body say, oh, I need to do a little bit better. Because guess what? It can only grow a little bit at a time. 
you, you're not going to do a bench press that causes you to gain five pounds overnight. It's not going to happen. So you're only going to gain at the rate you're going to gain. You just have to keep triggering your body to keep gaining. So um, keep that in mind. That's how you keep it smart, and that's how you keep from overtraining, and that's how you hopefully keep from hurting yourself uh, because it's not worth hurting yourself, people. We got long lives ahead of us. Uh, you need to be able to function all of that time. Um, yeah, that's... <laughs> That it that that's a, that's a rub to me, and I it, I'm going to go ahead and repeat it because it's one of the things that that caused me so much frustration as being uh, the tiny skinny guy, and I'm looking at these muscle magazines and trying to follow their workouts and not getting any results whatsoever. There was at one point where I was in the gym for four hours a day, four hours a day. Now that wasn't solid lifting the whole time. I did a lot of cardio. I would lift. Um, really only to find out much later in life that I was either doing nothing or I was doing harm because my body couldn't possibly react to what I was doing. I learned my hardest lesson when I got to the point in my life where I'm seeing my buddies, these big guys, I mean they might not have been super cut and ripped, but you know, they're at the they're at the bar tearing up the wings and the chips and the beer. Um and they're buff enough, you know, big guys, and I'm like that this isn't worth it. I'm I'm eating right and I'm working my butt off and I'm not gaining at all. And I just said, forget it. I'm just going to go into a workout, into just a maintenance routine and, you know, work out. But, you know, I was staying in shape. I wasn't going to throw it all out the window. But I was like, it's not, it's not worth my effort anymore. So I went to a maintenance, started gaining. So after I don't know how many years, I found out that my biggest detriment to training was that I was overtraining. My body simply could not naturally respond to the amount of work I was putting it through. So, yeah, lesson learned the hard way. Um, so, here's what to do. Maybe I should create a little template for this because it really can be easy. And it's honestly, it's what I do. I have I have little whiteboards over in the corner. When I come in for the week, uh, I get it set. And when I, one of the first things I'm going to tell you to do, I, I'm not doing very well myself. Get your take take one day. You're going to have to do some work. Answer these questions that that I said. So first, you know, pick the type of workout you you want to have. Do you want to do compounds? Do you want to do focus body group? Uh, the first thing to make sure you do. Full body, do not slice and dice this workout and go, well, I'm not doing the squat part. I'm not doing the lower body part. I'm, I just want chest and arms. No. Unless Quasimodo is a good look for you, unless you want to be that 90-year-old who is bent completely over and unfortunately is never going to be upright again, don't do that. Don't do that. Your body needs to be in balance. Um, so... Your opposing muscle groups need to be equally strong or it will throw you out of balance and nobody likes chicken legs. Don't do that. Just don't do that. Uh, so take the time and pick out a workout routine that you're going to stick with for six weeks. You only have to do it once. Document the workout routine that you're going to do. Like I said, I would recommend just going with one of these uh, services that 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 just delivers it to you. They're going to say for arms, do a couple sets of bicep curls, do tr your tricep extensions, do your rows for back. Basic, simple exercises. But what you need to do then is mix up the methods that you work out. And here's where it becomes slightly complicated. Uh, and you don't need to do this in the beginning. To start with, you just do all of those exercises in standard form, the standard way. But then there are there are finesse things that will let you get more more for the bang uh, of your buck of working out, and there, um, yeah, probably should put this in a template somewhere. But for example, time under tension, that is where you are doing a workout where you are doing a let's say let's say you're doing a bicep curl. 
you can do the curl really quickly, let it back down, and you're completely relaxed. And then you do it again, and you're completely relaxed. Time under tension is where you never let the bot, never let the muscle that's being worked out relax. So you can come back down, um, but for it to remain under tension, you either have to not let it go all the way back down or do something like lifting your arm so that even when it's straight, you're holding it. And uh, I believe that the general number is 30 seconds. If, if you need to keep that muscle under constant tension for 30 seconds, either on the contraction um, of, of whatever the exercise is or when on the negative side of it, when you're letting it down. But keeping constant tension on it is... Uh, one thing S squeeze of an exercise and squeeze i'm going to put into one of the most critical things to work in now that i mentioned before um, around intensity there's a thing called mind muscle connection it's really 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 important when you are doing an exercise if if you're not overly familiar with yourself with your body you are going to work on performing the exercise the way either the app is telling you to do it or the, the YouTube video or whatever you're watching that teaches you how to do it. Um, so if you're doing a bicep curl, it starts there, it needs to end up here. If, if all you're trying to do is get that weight from point A to point B, you can lean it back and move it over and you end up wherever it needs to be. Uh, so you can take care of that. But if if you are focusing on the mind to the muscle that you are working out and your goal is this is the muscle you're working out you're working out your bicep and your goal is to contract it if you're paying attention to just just contract that muscle get the most squeeze you can out of that muscle then the weight's gonna follow all you're trying to do is contract the muscle the weight has to move with it Otherwise, all you're trying to do is satisfy a checklist. I got the weight from this point to this point 10 times, and that's what my list said. Check. Nope. Nope. That is not what you're trying to do. What you were trying to do is get your bicep to react, right? So you have to stress your bicep. It's the same thing with chest. Chest is one of those, to me, that's critically important for, for mind muscle because when you're doing, if, if you're doing a, a bench press, people always will hunch their shoulders forward to to get the bar farther forward. What did that get you? You're not working out your shoulders. You're not trying to do that. You're probably going to um, your risk of actually damaging your rotator cuffs. But if you're focusing on your chest, if you're focusing on just getting the squeeze, that is what's going to get you the results. Um, like I said, this work is not going to be fun. Why wouldn't you want to get the maximum return for this short period of unfun time? Maximize that time. Embrace that unpleasant 45 minutes as the catalyst for getting you the end result that you want. So um, you can alternate your workouts between heavy and light. Uh, and that, that involves obviously the, the weight uh, that you're working with and the number of reps. So if you're going heavy, you're going to do lower reps. If you're doing light, you're going to do higher reps. Uh, size comes from lifting heavy, but you can't do that only and all the time. And in fact, there are, there are methods of doing gain with lighter weights, but it's, it has to be much more, much more structured. Uh, the, the, plan that I was following from Athlean-X actually had lower weights and higher rep uh, to gain mass. But that would only go for a certain time. I believe that was a six or an eight week program. And then you stop and you need to go work out another way. You, you have to mix it up. Your body adapts um, and limit the time. I said this before, my magic number is 45 minutes. All you have to do is work out hard enough to trigger your body to respond. That's all you're trying to do. You're not trying to devastate a muscle group. You are trying to trigger your body to say, I need to be stronger. And that's how the, that's how the magic happens. That's how, that's how it builds. So you have to take care of just focusing on getting that responsiveness that's that's going to get you the result that you want. 
get whatever you need to get your yourself in the right headspace of just attacking that 45 minutes with intensity, with focus on the muscle that you're doing, uh, and then enough mixing it up to, to make sure your body is still reacting. That's all there is to it, really. Pick an exercise method. Pick an exercise routine. Apps, YouTube videos, follow one of these fitness gurus. But basic workout routines. Do not look at a video that they happen to do on doing this thing. Because again, they're just trying to post another video. You need to find something that's providing a full program because that's going to bring it back down to the basics. That's going to tell you to do a bench press um, and, a, and a bicep curl and a tricep extension and a squat or um, whatever their list of, whatever their list of uh, activities are. Now, being heart healthy is important too. Uh, I, I'm challenged out here. I have a lot of physical work that I have to do. So... My calories get managed pretty well. Um, I don't, you know, I don't have to worry about accidentally getting too heavy uh, because I, I work. But that's not good. It's not good enough. I don't have, I don't have maintained elevated heart rate. I have a spin bike right here. Uh, I need to, I need to get on it more. I actually got on it once in the last week or two. Uh, but I'm a habit person. I need to make it part of my regular habit. Uh, it's easy for enough. For me to talk myself out of it saying well if i lift and i do this cardio i'm going to be way too tired to to do the other tasks that i have to do that's not good enough your heart needs to be strong and when when it comes to maintaining uh size or uh, percentage of body fat things like that your physiology changes based on what you're doing if you want a higher metabolism you need to do things that create a constantly elevated heart rate so working really hard in the yard, picking up blocks, moving it over, sitting it down, that's burning a lot of calories. That is not cardio. Um, that, is, that is work, which burns calories, but it is not cardio. You need something that, that um, elevates the heart rate regularly. You also have to be careful with diet. Restricting your diet tells the body brain, not this brain, tells your body brain, this person is trying to starve me to death. Um, and it will reduce your metabolism, which means you'll more slowly lose weight because you've restricted your calorie content. And when you do eat again, your body's going to go, oh my gosh, I finally got some food. I need to eat it all, like right now. So let's talk supplements and food. I mentioned that food is super important. It's also a lot of work, right? And it's expensive. I don't have time out here. Uh, there's plenty of videos out there that show meal prep. You know, these people get up and they spend all day Sunday and they put together little packages of all of this stuff. And I certainly did that for a long time. And you, you have to figure out what works for you. There's a lot that goes into the food aspect and you have to figure out what's going to do. What I do, honestly, at this point, I food to me is a, is a means to an end. So generally on a daily basis, I will have oatmeal with protein powder in it. I will have a couple of protein shakes. I use a, a pre-mixed um, food product uh, for lunch. It's, it's kind of like a ramen. It's, uh, uh, it's all vegetable based, um, although I'm not vegan, but you know, um, uh, I, I appreciate the vegan lifestyle and it, I certainly don't have a problem, you know, reducing the meat from that, from that perspective. I definitely have my meat when I have my dinner. Uh, but so I, I use one of the, uh, one of the, the meal replacement kind of products where you just boil water, you, you put the couple scoops of the stuff in and it has all of the balanced macros. It has the, the carbs, the fats, the protein, all of that. Is it good? It's good enough. I can eat it. I just, it's not gross. Um, I wouldn't go to a restaurant and buy it, but my lunch takes me, I don't know, a minute and a half, maybe a minute for the water to boil, pour it in there, let it sit for two minutes and eat it. And I'm done. It was just the step that I had to take to get the right calories in place. Generally, I eat one solid thought out meal a day and that's just dinner. And even that is usually something where I have made 
in bulk to eat for many days uh, in a row. I have a slow cooker. I have a pellet smoker. I will I will make huge cuts of meat, um, either either slow cook it or or smoke it or whatever uh, method I use for for um, cooking the protein, and then I put a couple cups of rice in the rice cooker make mashed potatoes in a huge bowl, what, whatever I need to do for my carb, big salads that I, you know, just take handfuls of at a time. And, and those just happen really quickly. But when I want to go out to eat, I, I go eat, I eat whatever I want. If, and I love me some Popeyes. I will go through a Popeyes drive through and get the family pack of French fries because I wanted to eat that because that was kind of an event that in that instance food was an event for me if you make every meal out of every day an event good luck to you i don't know how you are going to make uh that work out and i'm being honest with you because like i said food is one of the three critical components to making this work and it's not just eating it's getting the right balance of of protein carbs and um uh, fat in your diet and the ones that are right for you. So supplementation, obviously I made a statement about um, steroids. Do I judge it? I don't judge it. I've, I've chosen not to do it. Um, I certainly know when I was younger it was much less of a science and you were taking far too great of a risk uh, for the long-term benefits, and I absolutely chose not to. I said I will take the long, slow road instead. Um, I I had friends, especially managing a gym, who took the quick road, um, and it did not always go well. Uh, things are a little more advanced now. Definitely not recommending. I'm just saying that um, you know there's you have to make the decision that's right for you. The only thing that I will put out is that steroids are very temporary. You get a very temporary effect. But if there's a negative, it's generally a permanent negative. So do you want to risk the short-term positive uh, against the permanent negative? And even if it's a temporary positive, do you want to make this a regular thing? You know, I, I, I certainly know folks that will do a bulk up for the, the summer. You know, you got to get the beach body bulk up and then in the winter who cares it's a little rough on the body it's not something I would do um, I and what I don't want to do is somebody to see me in the winter and go oh what happened you know how about you maintain how about you just be healthy and when you're healthy and you take care of this uh, you look good so um, I'm, I'm not gonna advocate for for those shortcuts do I supplement I absolutely supplement um, I have a drawer full of, of just supplements. Uh, the most common one that I use that most people use is a protein powder. I use protein to augment. And by the way, you have to figure out what's right for you. I am telling you what I use. And I will tell you I spent 30 years of buying crap that I spent a lot of money on that, that did nothing. Um, so, but there are some that are just kind of really kind of considered staples um, and you can look these up so anything that's kind of you know got argue arguments both ways maybe you want to steer clear of the worst argument against protein is that maybe you don't need it if you have enough protein in your diet you don't need it those that say oh if you eat too much protein you're going to kill your kidneys no, no you're not um, the kidneys process protein but unless you are just that crazy you're not going to be having so much protein that you're going to cause your kidneys to shut down. It's no. Um, and on the kidney front, uh, creatine. I use creatine. Uh, creatine is probably one of the most studied workout supplements uh, that exists. Um, and I, I do use it. Uh, I've not had any problem with it. I see positive effects when I use it. Um, if you're interested in what it is, go look it up. Um, I'll I'll even provide links to the ones that I use because I order most of this stuff out of Amazon. Now that I'm <laughs> now that I'm out here in the country, um, you can't just run down to the local whatever, uh, and um, so I just generally rely on on Amazon to to you know bulk bring all the stuff that I need. Uh, 
I would use a fish oil. I, I don't think I've seen anything that says you shouldn't use an omega-3 fish oil. You have to find the one that's right for you. I'll send the ones that I use. Why do I use it? Because Amazon sells it. Um, it's relatively inexpensive and it had really good ratings. It seems to be working fine, so uh, it's fine. Um, I've recently added collagen to uh, the mix. And I'll tell you, this could be one of those things where I saw a fancy ad and it looked good for me. I've been using it for about um, 30 days. I think it's been because it's about out and I think it was a 30 day supply. Uh, but, you know, I've, I've kind of noticed I have even less aches in the joints. And that's also another problem when you change multiple things. You're not quite sure if you have a positive or negative effect, which one of the things did it. So. Using these supplements is a lot of trial and error for what works for you. Um, branch chain aminos, I do use those. There's nothing negative saying that they're harmful that I've ever seen. Just the worst uh, case scenario is they say your body doesn't actually need them, um, that you're not getting any effect from it, in which case you're just wasting the money. Um, that's your decision to make. You know, try these things, see if they if they work for you. And that is one of those times when age can come into uh, factors for certain for certain supplementation uh, because the body does produce things differently uh, as you get older. I take a pre-workout. Almost always take a pre-workout. Um, it's for energy. Um, part of it becomes psychological. You feel you need it, which is not good. Um, so I'm not bragging on that. But if I want really hard, intense workouts, I will use a pre-workout. So I supplement. Um, you should supplement based on what you think is, is right for you. To come back again, to summarize this, get a workout routine. That something that you're going to do for six weeks. Understand that for 45 minutes a day when you work out, it is going to be unpleasant and you are going to embrace that unpleasantness because it will bring you the results that you want. You're not there to enjoy the 45 minutes. That's stupid. If any video is trying to tell you you are going to be lifting so hard that that little vein is popping out and you are shaking and you are exceeding what your body really can do right then, some people might like that. There's a name for that. It's not normal. You shouldn't enjoy that. At the same time, I'm not saying hate it either. Embrace what it is. So I, I think it's a marine adage. Uh, pain is just weakness leaving the body. I got to tell you, I when I heard that one, it resonated. So when I was doing certain exercises and you're just getting that burn, um, the good burn, and I was like, I got to stop. And then you bring it back and go, well, if that's pain leaving the body, I need the burn to keep going because I want more weakness to leave the body. So it was, it was a little, it was a little inspirational. It was a lot inspirational, um, for one of the things that I did. Also, one of the things that helped me in my head is back when I was, uh, rowing to start with when I was about to give out, uh, the, um, the chase boat, we would always have the coach screaming at us to, you know, you're not doing enough, harder, faster. Uh, I, I could get that voice in my head, and that would that would make me get through it. It's 45 minutes. You can do it. Um, but don't focus on moving the metal from point A to point B. Focus on the, the muscle group that you are working on and fatiguing it. That's that mind-muscle connection. And doing 10 and being exhausted is not good enough. You did the 10. You could do it. Your body does not need to change unless you are getting to 10 with super terrible form or um, you are failing before you get to 10. Great. Keep going until you get to 10. The minute you can do 10, I don't care how hard it is. If you are doing 10 correctly, it's not heavy enough anymore. You got to go. You got to go up um, because otherwise people are like, oh, yeah, working out is getting easier every day. It should not get easier. Picking up a particular weight should get easier. But if your workouts are getting easier, you're not getting your results anymore, are you? Your body's like, nope, I'm in a good place. This is where I'm going to stay. If you want to stay, keep doing it. If you want to grow, 
do more.